free. We have uh, some updates from OSBI. Uh, we have uh, some information about our acts after exit proviso. We will have some legislation updates um, and we will have some specific dual credit updates from uh, our department here at SBCTC. We are going to show you all, um, if you don't know already, we have an enrollment dashboard um, as part of the state board's website. And so Jamie's gonna go into detail and show you all how to access some data and information there. And we are going to also take a peek at our Running Start billing report in CTC Link. Um, and so Brandon is going to and his team are going to help facilitate some of the conversations around uh, that piece, which will lead into a little bit more detailed um, information and a CTC Link focused uh, March 20th uh, uh, session. And then from 3 until 3.30, we'll, we'll do some breakout sessions. Uh, with some topics that we have for y'all. And then from 3.30 to 4, we'll, we'll kind of get some feedback from everybody in the breakout sessions and do some closing shares. So that's what our date is going to look like. It'll be go by pretty quickly here from 2 to 4. Okay. So unfortunately, Tim McLean, our OSPI dual credit program supervisor, could not join us today, but he did uh, update a couple slides for us and shared some information um, so I'm going to go ahead and Jamie will help me facilitate this piece here um, and go ahead and, and give you all, provide you all with some updates here. So um, currently under review, uh, OSPI and Tim are working on the Summer Running Start Bulletin, which will uh, fe feature standard Running Start enrollment, so Summer Running Start now, and then also, also some more information about after exit and what that looks like. Uh, it will also, currently under review uh, and not published yet, is the after exit declaration of intent for the high schools and the after exit assurances for colleges. So that information is not quite ready yet. It's currently under review and we hope to, I talked to Tim uh, this morning and we hope to have that, he will, we will have that available for our March 20th session to share out. And then I just wanted to, to make sure to point some of these things out, and, and Tim, on, uh, Tim wanted to share out too, is that on uh, February 13th, uh, via the some of the K-12 and our state board listserv, we shared out, uh, OSPI shared out a dual credit updates bulletin um, or newsletter, uh, which had included uh, our summer um, 2024 Running Star EVF, uh, non-digital and digital, and also a Running Start calculator and uh, a Running Start video, a tutorial. And so we're gonna go ahead and share that with you all right now, just in case you did not see that email. One second here. I guess I'll try to share. And yeah, when G while Jamie's working on that, we also, Kaylee, thank you, Kaylee, just dropped in the chat. Uh, a direct link um, to the bulletin. And then we're also going to go ahead and share um, yep, the slide deck from today. Thank you, Kaylee, so much. So y'all can refer to this um, and go ahead and click on uh, the, the links which, which are active so you can go and see these things directly as well. Are you able to see, can you see the dual credit updates now? Uh, no, let me see. Maybe I need to stop my share first here. Okay, there we go. Okay, awesome. Um, so, and Stephanie, please, if you want to add in, I was just going to go through so they know. Um, so that came out on the 13th of this month, and, and these are the updates that Stephanie has just on the screen. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't seen it, Kaylee's dropping it in, and just make sure you're looking at it pretty closely because there's um, additional information we're sharing, but, you know, more detailed um, along with all the access to the the, the RS, RSVBF, um, the calculator, and then the tutorial. And Stephanie's watched the tutorial, and you thought it was pretty pretty helpful. I have not had a chance to watch it. Yeah, I did think it was really helpful. It was nice because um, they had three different um, staff members uh, give the the presentation, if y'all haven't seen it yet. So uh, Tim McLean was part of it, uh, Becky McLean, and also Maria Mudo. Uh, from OSPI. So it was nice to get um, kind of different perspectives on like a, a director administrator role. Becky really does that um, behind the scenes calculator, you know, um, calculation, FTE piece. And then Maria has like, like a counseling background. It was really nice to, to watch that. So if you haven't seen it yet, I would highly encourage everyone to take a look. Yeah. And it may not hurt too, even if counselors got this, 
to send that to your counselors as a reminder. Um, send, send all this information so they have it a second time, a third time, so they're able to start reviewing these documents when they're working with students. So I will stop sharing and I'll let you get back to your slide deck, Stephanie. All right, thank you, Jamie. Okay, here we go. Okay, so continuing on. So like I said, uh, the PowerPoint is in the chat. Thank you, Kaylee, for sharing. And thank you, uh, Jamie, for going over that on your screen there, the, the bulletin or the newsletter. Um, so yeah, you should be able to, to go into the PowerPoint and click these links directly um, so that you all can um, access the resources here. Um, the other piece that Tim wanted me to remind everybody on is the high school and beyond plan platform update. So um, the legislative report is posted, and so the link is included there, so you can look at some more specific details. And also right now, there's a high school and beyond plan survey that is out, and um, it closes March 8th. So I strongly encourage, and it's available in English and Spanish, strongly encourage uh, folks to fill that out, complete that if you haven't yet. It definitely takes a little bit of time. Um, I think it took me a good maybe half hour, 45 minutes to work through all of the questions in detail because they're asking such specific questions to their partners on what to what we should include um, in the statewide high school beyond plan platform. Um, so I found it um, pretty useful and, and they're gathering a lot of great information there, but I strongly encourage everybody to fill that out if you haven't yet. And then uh, OSBI plans to meet on, meet on March 18th uh, uh, for a vendor, vendor interviews. So based on those vendors that they are thinking about and based on the feedback from the um, survey, uh, they're going to do some interviews um, based on, on everything from, from that they get from the surveys. Okay, next up. After exit proviso, okay. So uh, summer is coming, summer 2024 is coming. And so uh, we have our after exit proviso again this summer. Um, it has, OSPI has decided to open up access uh, to the after exit proviso for some certain populations of students. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and read through this slide and then um, please go ahead and ask questions. We can take some time to ask any, answer any questions that, um, uh, come up for folks for this, because I know there may be some. So um, after extra proviso will be non-graduating 11th or 12th grade students who met or exceeded that 1.4 AAFTE limit spring of 2024. Uh, so they're eligible for a maximum of 10 credits like other non-grads. Uh, Non-graduating 12th graders are not fifth year seniors until fall of 2024. And they're not, so therefore they're not limited to high school graduation requirements. Or the other population of students, which is, is the same as last year, is graduating students within 15 credits of their first AA, regardless of their annual um, FTE. So eligible for a maximum of 15 credits, but limited to only those satisfying the AA degree requirements. Um, and the high school records should remain open for credits to be tra transcribed for this population. So, um, yeah, uh, questions. I'm going to go ahead and open it up because I'm sure that there will be some. Michelle, go ahead. Good to see you. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good to see you too. I just wanted to double check. Um, with the second portion on the page right now, the graduating students within 15 credits. Um, I know last year there was some limitations with students had um, having to have completed a certain number of credits every quarter to be eligible for this portion. I'm wondering if that is going to be the same this year. I remember, you know, they needed to have 15 credits fall, winter, and spring, or they needed to have a combined um, portion with their high school. I'm wondering if there's that limitation this year too, or if it's simply being within 15 credits of a degree. I'm looking over at Jamie on this one, but I believe it's just within 15 credits of the degree, but go ahead, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably talking about the annual FTE that they had to meet or exceed the annual FTE. So they've, they've basically reinterpreted what's in the proviso. And just to make sure you all know that this proviso is separate. It is not the basic ed dollars. It's a separate $3 million that was put into the budget last year, and it expires after the summer. 
Um, but yeah, so they've opened it up. So yes, you're right, Michelle, last year you had to exceed and and then and it was easy because it was it was easier to do that with the 1.2, but with the 1.4, it's a little more challenging. So now it's either you're 15 credits away from a degree, an AA, and you can finish that off in the summer, or you may not be 15 credits away or graduating, but you are have met your max of the 1.4. So it's expanded. It, but it does make it a little more confusing. And so what I would say is our recommendation is do your due diligence, but we don't want you having to like stress over this. Get students in classes, do the best you can with what you have and get them on the list and get this done. Um, no one's picking apart stuff at this point. So I, I just, I don't want this to um, be another, I mean, it can be and a barrier of getting students these funds. So just do what's in the best interest of your students. And, in, and and follow the guidelines as, as well as you can. Great, thank you. All right, thank you, Michelle. Other questions? So I see a question in the chat. Can you explain how non-graduating 11th graders would fall under after exit when they still have their senior year ahead of them? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, so that, that's where this gets messy. So I, I wanna make sure everybody, we, We've gone back and forth with OSPI asking, like this this is confusing because it's called after exit. And they are very aware that it's it's not matching like logically when you when you read it, interpret it, but they are just trying to make sure they spin down the funds and get as many students out the door. So I would really just ignore that's called after exit at this point and just follow what's in here. And it's really just like an, it's gonna be this option, exceeding the 1.4 or after exit graduated and they're 15 credits towards a degree. And that's that's your second option. Um, okay. And you're gonna see more in that second option is where you should be. We shouldn't see a lot of students in the first. Hi, it's Linda at Bellevue College. Can I just ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. So yeah. this first part is actually if a current 11th or 12th grader has exceeded their 1.4 FTE over this school year and they want to attend for summer quarter, they can take up to 10 credits funded. And that would go under the regular billing piece. No? So that's okay. why it's, yeah, it's it's exactly oh, what you said, Linda. Okay. It's just that it can go under after exit because they wouldn't have any additional funds through. Um, okay. All right. So so can I know this isn't really the place for this, but can I say one thing about this? So this act act after exit funding in both of these scenarios. Last year, maybe I'm wrong, but I really feel that we were not paid for the entire summer quarter. And so I, okay. so we were shorted in days, right? Yeah, that, that's probably a separate issue that I will talk about. Okay, so I just All want right. to make so, sure I'm not equating the regular funding yeah, with after got it. exit. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, and I, so what I, what I want to say is we don't, I'm, I'm just to be transparent. This is, this is challenging the way it's written. We know that we've, we've given all the feedback to OSPI before this went out. This is the approach they wanted to take. Um, but what I would say is don't focus so much on this 1.4. Focus on your students that are 15 credits away from a, a degree that are graduating. That is really the core and the intent of this proviso. So don't spend a lot of time like worried about those pieces on top. Focus on the students that are 15 credits away if you've got the time to then go back and figure out students that are at that 1.4 or just wait for students to let you know they're, they think they're close. We're not asking you to even actively recruit those students, but we are trying to get as many students with a degree, if that's helpful. Because I know this is challenging with staffing. And so I just, I just want to try to be as real and candid with you all on that piece. And then Linda, I will talk about um, the summer count issue in a little bit. Um, because yeah, we, we know it's a problem and we're working with the legislature right now on it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Quick question. This is Teresa from uh, Olympic College. The high school records should be made open for credits to be transcribed. So then I'm gonna assume that there is a document or it's just um, that we're gonna send forward to the registrar so that happens, right? Is there, a, is there something in place that we will be utilizing to send to the high school so that they don't close out those transfers? 
I think, Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's just on the high school side that he's making sure they know to keep it open. You're not doing anything differently on your business processes. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah. So the, Tim had updated the slide and the one prior to it. So um, we're just trying to do our best to kind of share what Tim Tim had had uh, wanted us to share with everyone. But I, I agree. I think, Jamie, you're right. I think it's more of that's on the high school slot side. And that's just like a for us to be aware of that the record should be re remain open. And I see that question is also in the chat. Um, if, you know, if graduated students don't need the classes, it's just, it's more of um, what if students do need that on their transcript eventually, right? Because maybe they do, maybe they'll need it for some reason. So it's important to still have that open for students during that summer. Um, so yeah, we, I will, I will ask Tim a follow-up on that one too, though, just to, to ensure we're not missing something there, Teresa. Thank you, Stephanie. And I think what we're going to do, so Stephanie and I will keep tabs of questions we can't answer. Um, and then Tim will be at our March session. We're asking him to also bring Becky with him. So what we can do is really nail down any ambiguity as much as possible. Um, and then have um, Brandon's team on the student financial side walk us through the technical pieces of CTC Link that will be very similar to last year. So you'll get the policy from OSPI as clear as you can, clear as possible. And then, and then we'll walk you through um, the, the CTC link side. So we'll make sure you're supported as much as we can before, before registration hits for summer. And the other piece I wanted to make sure um, to mention too in this, and, and it's not on the PowerPoint specifically, but um, so the, the intent here with the proviso for our graduating students within the 15 credits of their AA is to attend a community technical college and finish that AA degree out of the community technical college. The non-graduating 11th or 12th grade students, it really, uh, OSPI is, is letting us know that it is open to any college running start um, for students to take, but um, the system's not really set up to do that yet for summer. So we're kind of uh, still working through that, but students could technically in that non-graduating 11th and 12th grade category, um, take classes um, at a four-year, for example, um, if it fit for them. But again, don't wanna get into the weeds too much on that. I just wanted to make sure to mention that piece, um, that that is something students could do or access. Yeah, we definitely don't need to, don't have to advertise that out or anything. And I think Central tried to do it last year and it was pretty limited. Um, Eastern, I think we'll try to be doing spring. You have to, or summer, excuse me, by in statute, they should be offering it, but it's been challenging at the university to do summer. They're just not built the same way to do it and offer as much as we do. So, um, it's much easier. It makes more sense for students just to continue on with us, but thank you, Stephanie, because it is something that could happen. So we want to make sure that you have all the information. All right. Back to some questions. Um, so Jane Berry in the chat, is there a summer EVF and then an after exit form? So yes, the summer EVF and the PowerPoint um, and also that newsletter that went out for from OSPI on February 13th, there's links in there to the, the summer EVF form um, that is updated. So there's a, a non-digital and a digital copy in there. And after exit form, that's something that um, we should have vetted um, from OSPI and uh, ready to share out at our uh, March 20th um, series. So our next one. All right, next question. Will there be the additional document for the after exit proviso like last year? Um, I believe so. That's what I believe Tim and OSPI is working on right now. Um, and so stay tuned for a little bit more information on that piece and what that looks like for folks. And yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just the insurances thing that was last year. And that was just like signing off that you did your due diligence. So um, we're, we'll review it. We do, we're really asking to keep it very basic. We don't want you having to jump through any more. All right, Hillary Emerson, would a flow chart be available at some point? I know the OSPI bulletin will have a complete explanation, but I know I would benefit from a visual chart to follow. For example, for instance, class of 2026, are you this or that? Yes or no? That way we can go through the options and would also help high school counselors. We can ask OSPI. Yeah, that's a good one. I would worry, I mean, we can ask, I'm just gonna say that I, I worry that it could make it more complicated and then we might get too in the weeds. But if, if we think it could be functional for some, I we are more than happy to advocate for that. 
All right. I think that's all of the questions. Does anyone have anything else for now for after exit? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, so we've got 10 days left in the legislature. Um, uh, in the next slide, I will talk about two things that are happening in the legislature, but that are not bills, but that are related to you all. But two that you um, should know about, uh, House Bill 1146, this is the one that was here last year. It's additional um, language that would put in the statute that high schools are required each term before a student registers to receive all dual credit information and financial assistance information from ninth through 12th grade. And that's, so that means every type of dual credit program. Um, and that's like, could be digital. So just an email, et cetera. Um, it's a pretty, um, I'm just giving you the language right now in the chat, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty basic, fairly non-controversial, um, but it is putting more, um, a little bit more responsibility on um, uh, the high schools. So, you know, one thing we could talk about later, and that might be maybe in our April meeting is, could we be proactive in that? I was just thinking like, maybe we all can agree on some language that we'd ask the, the schools to send out that that's that's helpful and inviting for all programs. Maybe we can take take ownership of that. So that's one less thing. And it also gives us maybe a little bit of um, input in that. So we can talk about that more, maybe creating some type of blurb to share out if you're interested. Um, Senate Bill 5670 um, has changed a lot. So I wanna make sure everyone is aware because initially it was letting 10th grade students participate in Running Start Online, but there was a big amendment at the end that is all gone. The only thing it's doing is ensuring that rising juniors can enroll in Running Start that summer before. And you all knew that that was already happening because OSPI has interpreted the language that way, but this kind of what is what we call codifying it where we're putting the language in statute so it's clear. So no one can go back and say, no, we can't do that. So it will say in the RCW, um, rising junior students who have completed 10th grade and are going to 11th grade can access Running Start in the summer for 10 credits. And those 10 credits do not count towards their annual FTE once they start their junior year. So that's all that bill's doing. It's in um, it's towards the end of the rules committee in the house. It'll get a vote on the floor and it will be passed and signed. Jamie, does it still have to be online classes only? No, no, no. So all okay, that is, cool. out, yeah, the only thing is just read regular running start students be able to access 10th grade, or excuse me, 10 credits in summer. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. It, I don't think anyone had questions. So. Oh, wait. Hey, Janae, do you have a question on that one? Hi, yes. Um, just a, maybe a logistics question. And if it's just up to the individual institution, then I that I can run with that. Um, but would there be, a, is there up to the discretion of the college to say, we're not allowing 10th grade access to Running Start at this time or for it for, through an admissions standpoint? Um, you is, can't. Do the colleges have the ability to th do that? No, okay. Yeah, 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 you'll have to, yeah. So, um, you know, I think there could be some strong recommendations on the type, can't say if like you have to, but some strong recommendations around the courses. You should be taking in the summer, like really folks, maybe just, you know, college success course, uh, you know, um, but yeah, right now, if, as long as that goes in, and even the way OSPI has interpreted House Bill 1316 from last year, we, we, we can't limit or prevent students from enrolling after they've completed 10th grade. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Oops, there we go. All right. And I think I saw Kaylee ready to uh, share screen. Think, uh, sorry, Kim, do you think I could just finish with the legislature stuff? So so I'm just thinking that might flow better. I Good just, idea. I mean, yeah. Okay. Please do, Jamie. Kaylee, thank you. Okay. So um, the summer running count issue. So we real, um, you know, we realized when we did summer last year that clearly there's only two count days with the compressed schedule, which means our colleges are only getting two thirds of the reimbursement. So we've been working with OSPI on some language to put into the budget that creates an enhancement. So basically you're getting more money in two counts that will make up for that third count. Um, we, uh, Representative Paul put in our request. It was in the budget. Um, there has been like some back and forth on the amount. And so we, I've, we've been asking um, representatives and senators to advocate for this. 
and the hope is we will uh, make sure it is fixed, but it, it's, it's in the process and it's a high priority to make sure that we're getting the full reimbursement for summer. So as soon as that's official, um, probably in mid-March, I'll be able to share more information with you. But just know it won't be like a third count date that we got to figure out. It'll just be two. You're just going to get an enhanced rate. Questions on that one? Okay. And then the other one, um, we are, uh, so we've been meeting with um, our, our ARC friends, or our registrars, and running some of you that are on this call today um, about the issue with running star and residency, that undetermined status, not being able to ask them questions, but when they enroll in courses below 100 level or exceed that 1.4, we have to ask for tuition calculation purposes, and it's become a lag. You know, it's it's extra workload on the front the front end at registration offices. It's a workload on our running start staff, and it's also a, a, a chilling, not great effect on our students and what that feels like when we have to ask this question, especially if they don't feel comfortable disclosing their, their immigration status. And so what we're trying to do is make a change next year um, with uh, the RCW, basically adding some language that when students are in the Running Start program, they're considered residents through Running Start. So every Running Start student is just a resident. You don't have to be asking them questions. You don't have to ask for additional information. They're just coded as, as residents. So it would just be taken care of. It's into law. Um, we can't do that till next year. We're going to have a big. Um, we've got a lot of things we're trying to fix next year with the big um, with the big budget session. But we know it's still a problem. So we are requesting a state board approved waiver. Um, so I'm meeting with uh, presidents this week to ask their permission to move this forward to our state board. And they will basically um, this waiver will just be in place for all running start students. And we'll have a you know and we'll have you know. Uh, a meeting of training of what that looks like on business practices. And we anticipate if this waiver, once this waiver is approved, whatever process we designed for you, we'd like to keep it the same way once it's in the RCW. So we're not asking you to change it halfway, that it's just what you do. But it'll just be a waiver for all students. The one thing you just need to be careful with is if they stay on as a regular student after they've graduated, that waiver needs to be taken off and tuition is going to have to be um, evaluated regarding residency. But Anyway, we're really excited about this, and we we hope it's a win. I, we're trying to see any negative impacts here, but we're not seeing it. So we'll take it to the president's. If the board's board approves it in March, it should be effective, I believe, by April, and we'll make sure that we give you more information once that's completed. But thank you to all those that have been working on this. We've got several of you on the call taking extra time to have these conversations, and we really appreciate it. Um, Okay, I'll just leave if there's any questions here. Otherwise, I'll let Kaylee show the new uh, dual credit YouTube. Okay. Okay, looks like we don't have any yet, but um, we can get back to that if someone has any questions during this. But um, we just wanted to share with you all where dual credit lives in the State Board YouTube page. So I'm just going ahead and drop this link in the chat really quick and then share my screen. One second. Okay, so if you click on that link, um, it'll take you to the State Board YouTube page. So this is what the homepage looks like. Um, and then if you wanted to find specifically dual credit, you just need to go to playlists. And then right here, we're the first one. You just need to click playlist. And we just created this. So all we're gonna have on here is this meeting from today and then the one we had from last time. But we're hoping to have um, you know, future resources for you guys that hopefully you'll find helpful. But yeah, it's about it from me. I'll go ahead and stop my chair and pass it back to Jamie and Stephanie. And thank you, Kaylee and Stephanie. That is, that's all of them putting that together. We're excited to have everything in one place. Yes, thank you so much. All right, let's uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint here. There we go. Okay. All right. Um. So the next thing we wanted to talk about was the high school counselor video recording. Um, Jamie, oh, did sorry, you want that to take me? <laughs> <laughs> um, and we can tag team this. So. Yeah. Stephanie and I um, had heard from OSPI that the counselors are, real, well, we hear this from the counselors, all of you have too, 
of wanting just some additional training, but having capacity and funding to attend certain events and take time away from students is challenging. So we talked about um, putting together little snippets, like videos of different um, themes and stuff. We were going to try to get one done like right away, but OSPI had some additional feedback and I think they weren't, they weren't ready to move forward yet. But what we're trying to do is uh, we've already got a group together. If, if you haven't been already meeting with us, let us know if you want to be a part of it. But we're hoping to identify certain things that don't necessarily expire quickly, um, that we can start bringing students, counselors, you all, and, and, and basically do a training and a panel and just like these clips, I shouldn't say clips, videos that counselors can access when they want to. Um, and we're hoping to start that in the summer. So if you all are interested and please let us know um, and we may be tagging you anyway for, for some help in that area. And it's really hoping to help all of us, right? Like, so when your counselors are asking you all these, you know, certain questions, you're gonna have access to these videos and you can say, hey, look, this link has this, this, and this, and this, let's start there. So hopefully we're all helping each other building kind of um, a library of video resources. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. And um, our, our group that, and I know some of y'all are included in that work, so thank you so much. Um, our, our initial meeting with our group, uh, there were some great ideas about maybe a collaboration approach with maybe some high school counselors that you all have really good relationships with and doing maybe some videos together um, as a team to kind of share out statewide. Um, so there's uh, there's been some really great ideas that have already come out of, of about that. And so that we're looking forward to, um, you know, doing a little bit more work on that in the summer. So thank you, Jamie. Okay. All right. Um, so the math placement grant, I know I shared out about this. We shared out about this last time. Um, so the state board and College Spark, we have a placement grant together. And so we have already had two convenings um, as a result and uh, are busily uh, planning our third convening in person at Tacoma Community College, April 25th. It is open to all. And let me tell you a little bit more about that placement grant work. Um, we have developed uh, with the help of 21, I believe it is 21 of our community technical colleges. And I know a lot of you all in the Zoom room here have been involved in that work and have been attending some of the convenings. So thank you so much for all of your feedback and input. Uh, we have put together a grid, uh, we're calling it a grid, but basically it's a high school transcript universal placement policy. And so right now we are in the process of um, getting pilot colleges to commit and our commitment deadline is actually this week, the 29th, um, but there, there can be a little bit of uh, flexibility there for folks who maybe haven't been in the room or colleges who are just now hearing about this work um, to commit to this. And, and basically what we would be asking, what we have been asking is for this placement grant that we've, placement grant, this grid that we've developed all together um, to implement it and then to put scores all in the same place in CTC link. Uh, and so that we can work on tracking and what that looks like. Um, so part of this work is obviously reducing barriers uh, for students. That's a big part of this. So the idea would be to have this universal transcript placement policy that eventually, hopefully, uh, will be um, utilized statewide. And so a student, when they you know go to place into our system, uh, it wouldn't look different based on what school, community technical college that they're they're trying to get into. So that's really the hope there with this work that we're doing. Um, and so it, it definitely has some momentum. There's really not a lot of guidance that's been um, put forward in terms of placement. So we're starting with math, but we are excited about the idea of looking at English placement as well, uh, placement practices. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's just really exciting work. And so um, just wanted to, it definitely impacts our running start students uh, and, and high school students and our system as a whole. So wanted to make sure just to share some, some share outs about that. So I'm hoping um, we have some pilot colleges and folks in the room who um, uh, continue to do the work, but the convening April 25th is open to all. Um, so we hope to put some registration information out about that soon. All right. Go on to the next slide. If we didn't have any, oh, uh, video suggestion. Okay, for the high school counselor video course equivalencies. How can how can we be equitable? I love that. Yeah, there's Thank a couple you. of great suggestions there, so we'll make sure. Kaylee, can you you'll make sure we can capture the chat. 
download it so we have <clears throat> we can get those later. Perfect. Okay. So next up, we didn't quite get to this last time during our first series, um, but I, I had mentioned this when we were going over the agenda, but the enrollment dashboard um, on our state board website, uh, Jamie was going to show you all how to get to that and how to pull data. So when we were looking at um, some data last time uh, during our Running Start survey, we were pulling it from this dashboard. So we we're going to go ahead and show you all uh, how to get there and then what um, kind of fields you can look at and, and pull for your Running Start students. Okay. Are you all seeing the enrollment data? Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so this isn't necessarily new. You all have access to this, but I just didn't realize how much of you, how, or excuse me, how many of you knew about it. Um, so this is kind of a quick way, you know, I usually always check in with our research department and like Noah, who may still be on the call before I send out in information around any kind of um, enrollment data. But um, you can use this dashboard. We have private dashboard if you're on your college server, and then we have public. There, there's a lot of different dashboards and, you know, that could be a whole nother, maybe bring Noah back and do a whole nother like um, uh, training on that piece. But I wanted to make sure you at least knew um, where you can go uh, for for enrollment. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat to why. Uh, why am I not seeing my chat? Um, oh, dang it. Sorry. Well, I'll make sure I put that in the chat in a minute. But um, so you can check out your enrollments. Um, so if you go into the enrollment data, the FTE and headcount, and I'm trying to make my screen bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, struggling here. I don't know. It's just the mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. sharing on these multiple screens. Um, can you all see okay? I feel like I'm this isn't going to work. Hold on. That's not going to I just need this. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I just need them to look better. Okay. Now let me try this again. The struggle is real with the two screens, Jamie. The struggle is real. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I I feel you. Like being a movie. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so when you go to the FTE headcount, you can select um, the years you want to look at and then your colleges. So this is going to show all the colleges and it has FTE and your headcount here. So I'm just going to say, like, if you want to look just at last year's, you can apply. Uh, and then the thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is selecting running start. If you don't select that, then you're going to get all your students. Um, and so then you can start looking and you can look at demographics. There's plenty of other things you can look at with enrollment. But right now, I just wanted to show you where I, um, I we gather some of just the basic enrollment when we're looking at from year to year. Um, and this is not the system totals, but this is just where you can find yours. And then you can also go to system totals and then see where we're at from 20, uh, as of right now, and then what our full one looks like. Um, well, excuse me, yeah, our full ones, um, where the FTE is and the headcount. And then also you can go into demographics and look at different trends. There's plenty of information. So if you haven't seen it, you know, um, I um, I would check it out, but I'd always check in, you know, with your institutional research when you're publicizing any of this. But if you're just trying to look and get an idea and you're not sure or you want to compare a little bit from college to college, this is um, this is where you go. And I will pop the link into the chat right now. OK, just wanted to get that out there. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Perfect. So I want to make Thank sure you, um, our CTC link, friends, financials, I think they have to leave at three. So I'm wondering, Stephanie, do you think we could just skip over? Okay. Let's do it. 
All right, let's go to CTC link first. Okay, so um, we acknowledge that uh, a lot has happened since the initial running start billing report was first created in CTC link. <laughs> uh, we now are all on board, right, with CTC link. And so we thought this was the perfect time to take a peek at the running start billing report and maybe make some edits to it, add some features, um, remove stuff from the report. And so what better um, opportunity than right now to, to have that conversation with you all um, and uh, also kind of mention something that we've added. So um, in working with our amazing student financials team, uh, we have added a new column to the report, which will go into place tomorrow morning when you pull the Running Start Billing report, it will have an advisor category. So um, really exciting. Um, and I, I think that we've heard uh, that from folks for a while now um, that that was something that would be nice to include. So that will go into effect for tomorrow, uh, as of tomorrow morning. Um, and so the other thing, you know, we just wanted to kind of open it up and uh, Brandon, please feel free and, and team to jump in here too, to facilitate this conversation. One of the things that we're going to do is our March 20th series. So our next one, our ne next session to this is we are going to um, kind of do a deep dive into CTC link. We're going to uh, talk about after exit and kind of do a, a refresher training. Our student financials team is going to do a refresher training on after exit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, and also we're, we're purposely asking questions about the billing report today so that hopefully we can uh, make some edits to things for folks um, and, and maybe hopefully have um, some, some uh, things produced by, by March 20th, but we'll see. Um, so I think uh, a question maybe to open it up to folks is um, two really what would you like to see removed from the report and what would be helpful to add to the report maybe we can start there but i know also brandon um correct me if i'm wrong we were going to maybe show uh a billing report just so folks can actually see it um just in case you know um we don't have it in front of us uh yes i will share right now wonderful thank you and so heather you are spot on it, oh, am I sharing a, a scuba dive? Hold here? on, let me. There you go. Okay. Okay. So uh, you are spot on. The new newer column is at the very end, and Wonderful. so this this will be populated. Thank you. <laughs> uh, after, after beginning uh, tomorrow morning, uh, when you run the report. And so, uh, yeah, take a look tomorrow morning. Uh, schedule it to run as, as always, uh, because it's such a such a biggie. Don't don't run it out right in the regular career review. That's just a, a usual note. But that's it. Am I, am I sharing okay or no? Um, actually, we can't see you, Brandon. Oh. It, it looked like it was sharing, and then it went away. Oh, okay. there we go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, here's a, just a little screenshot of uh, where you'll find that information at the, the far right end of all that data that is displayed. Wonderful. I'm going to go to chat because I know we've got a lot of stuff going on in the chat right now. Add gender would be great. Add cumulative earned credits, please. Adding quarterly and cumulative GPA would be helpful. And then Dan, Dana, can you elaborate on your, your question? I don't run it outright in the query viewer. I don't understand that. I just am, I think Brandon said something about don't run it outright in the, Q, the query viewer at the very tail end of what he said. It was like really quick and it was something to do with health. I don't know. Can, so Brandon, can you repeat that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, when you go into the reporting tools and CTC link, there is an option for a query viewer. And then you can go in to select the query and just to run it to HTML. And if you do that with this particular report um, or with the RS enroll uh, other report, anything that has a lot of data, it's going to take some serious time to run. And so it will block it'll it'll 
bog you down. And so you won't be able to do anything else in CDC link. So there's an option when running queries, it's called a schedule query. And all you need to do is uh, set up a run control for it and include the proper query name. And then while that's running, you can continue doing other, other work and it won't bog you down. Got it. Thank you very much. All right. Looks like we have some questions too. And Brandon, I don't, I don't think your screen is still sharing. Okay. Yeah. I can just hear that and sweat. <laughs> Oh, Zoom. Hey, watch the last one. I have to pick Jack number five anyway. Yeah. I'll take and then, Hillary, I see your hand up. Please feel free to, yeah, to go ahead and ask a question. Thanks. Um, now, I came to CTC Link at the end. Um, so, blessing curse there. Um, and I was completely baffled on why this query had so many columns. Um, and so what I would like is just the billing query to only have the data that we need to do the billing and not everything else. Like it, we, it's really should be no more than 10 in my opinion. And then if we could please have queries that obviously we all want and need, um, to run demographics, to see advisors, um, like, so, yeah, I just don't understand why 99% of all this is in one giant query. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. <laughs> oh, no, totally understandable. And uh, the the reasoning is, is for that. This is the, the big master data from which your query builders can copy it out and then produce qu queries that are specific yeah. for your, your, your situation. And that's so that's just what... been a big challenge so far. So, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, there's definitely some query trainings and uh, if the, I believe you can still submit a query, a report request with the state board uh, reporting team. And mm. they can, I believe, do that on your behalf, on your yeah. institution's behalf. My my guys did a, um, a BI. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, and so that's been mostly working. Um, a little more stylized. Again, you know, we, we don't need, I don't, I don't know. I would just like to see smaller, more useful queries rather than one giant one, I guess, for my own use. Yeah, I mean, I do believe uh, the a, a ticket request can be submitted and just make sure you, you tell them to use this billing report and to give them the specific uh, column header, uh, and then they can work on producing that. But I know that we wanted to have a, a a central main repository as a base for all of the data to work from. I guess I just thought that would be CTC Link itself rather than well, like you know, like the instructor ID number. Like that's I don't know why any of us would need that at at every time. Oh yeah, maybe like a simplified version. <laughs> that might be good. That sounds good to me. I'll well, and that's that, part I'll of what, that. yeah, that's part of what we're trying to do. So, so like Brandon said, you know, part of this is we don't want to remove anything that is feeding information to you all that is needed in some way, but how do we, I agree, there's like 40 categories, right? How do we maybe remove some things that are absolutely not needed on there? Um, and then maybe if needed, add some columns that could be useful for folks. But I hear what you're saying, Hillary, because Brandon and, and team has talked about that too. Do we create smaller reports with maybe more specific demographic information or do we try to like add it to this and then simplify some of these categories that are not needed that maybe we thought at the beginning were? So that's kind of what we're trying to gather is just some information from you all as what you're like, absolutely not. I have never even seen that, worked with that Pete, that category. We don't need that. Um, and I can see that there's a hand raise. Go ahead. I know that you've had your hand raised for a little while. So I, I want to make sure to give some, some space there. No problem. I just wanted to direct my question back to the advisor column. Where is that data being pulled from? Um, because I know we talked about our last meeting, the running start, student running start page, how there's that column for a counselor name, but there's nowhere to really type in that counselor's name. You'd have to have somewhere where you input in CTC link for that data to be pulled. I'm just trying to figure out where I where I can go into CTC link and, and say, this is a counselor for this student and that it will show on this advisor column. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Brandon. Did you want to? No, 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 please. Um, so the advisor column is is actually pulling, um, gosh, I don't know what the actual pay without looking at it right in front of me. Um, but it's pulling whatever advisor has been um oh, their college advisor, not their college oh, advisor, yes. Uh, okay, I for the student. And so what um Brandon's team has done is they put like a, if you pull it yourself tomorrow, you'll see if your student does have more than one advisor, there will be a comma. So it'll include all the it should hypothetically include all of the uh, advisors that are listed for that student at your college. So we're talking about college advisors. Sorry, I didn't clarify that. No, no, um, no that makes my brain's not working. That totally makes total sense. Thank you so much. <laughs> but you do bring up a good question that I also wanted to ask. And what we had talked about prior to, to having this, this session here is, um, the, the question about the counselor name in that in CTC link student running start page, is anyone currently using that feature or can you all type in counselor name to that? Right, Brandon, that's what we wanted to ask folks to understand. Currently, I, I can answer that. No, the table, <laughs> I dumped the table after we met and talked about it. It's blank and there's currently no place to enter the data in, in PeopleSoft. I think it was kind of an initial, we were going to roll over that data. It never got captured via the rollover. So that's something we still want. I think that'd be like a project we'd have to work with our app services to create a place to actually insert the data. Got it. So it sounds like there's nowhere to even put that in there. Thank yeah, you. Not, awesome. not currently, at least. <laughs> right. Okay. As a workaround, I just type the counselor's name in the comment section on the student running start page. Um, it's just helpful for me to figure out who their counselor is at their high school. Um, but if there was a field on the running start, student running start queries, one of them that shows those comments, that'd be helpful, but I um, understand that if that can happen, that's fine. This is just my little workaround, but if we could put, since it is a field, if we could get rid of it or have it as an option, that'd be great. I was hoping we could go back to, um, I mean, Hillary started the conversation and then Anne added in. Yeah, so, I mean, is, is that our next step? And I guess I would ask Brandon and Stephanie too, like, should we look at um, being able to have um, one report that reflects how we fill out the P223 that so we're not, because yeah, basically what's happening is they're taking the information and then pasting it into an Excel format and, and, and going from there. So wondering if we could, can we map one system-wide um, report that would meet the P223 requirements? Um, in addition to still having this, but one that, that, that isn't, that might be a little bit easier. Um, but I'm, I'm looking towards Brandon and team on that. And Stephanie, if I'm stepping out of my lane. <laughs> no, that sounds like a great idea, I think. <laughs> yeah, the, definitely possible. And, um, you know, the fortunately queries are uh, extremely malleable. And so uh, making them and building out from all of the data uh, out of the system is uh, kind of um, unlimited. And so, uh, yes, uh, as far as kind of collecting what everybody's needs and wants are, that's kind of the biggest challenge. Uh, the actual you know, producing of the report is, is usually uh, doesn't take much time at all. Okay. I, I think we can get to an agreement because we're all having to do the P223, you know, the same information. I think everyone has like, maybe ideals of additional stuff for themselves, but maybe maybe our next step focus would be getting to where it's it's matching up. Um, I think I see, I think I got two ands with questions. And and one quick uh, asterisk here, uh, the, the information that's been displayed is all from a scrubbed environment. So none of this is real student data. It's, it's based on student data, but it, none of it is actual information that can, that's a, a you know, transmissible. Thanks, Brent. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I have a, just a quick question. I'm not sure if this is anything um, already as our IR folks, but they, maybe they may uh, look into and submit a ticket soon. But this uh, is there is this a possibility that that we create a query the same the report, but instead of quarter by quarter, it's month to month. The reason I ask because when high school counselor asked me how many FTE this student already reclaimed or used, 
uh, in the last uh, in last year so that I can, can calculate the summer uh, after he left. Um, and if I have a, if I can pull a query that I have the FTE used for each month, I can easily tell that counselor, these are the FTE already been claimed or used for each month. Um, so I don't know if, if someone else have a better way coming to the, this coming summer uh, um, calculation, please share with me. But if, if that is something that we can do as a system, that's gonna be so easy for us just to, to calculate that for each month and send it information, that information to the high school. Can I add one small thing to that? If you're if you're going to try to figure out how to way to do that calculation across the, all the quarters, it also needs to include if the student has dropped anything during a quarter, because that also reflects on the FTE. Yes, that's why I asked for each month. Right? <laughs> yeah, because if it's this month, we will yep. know that. Yeah, if we drop this uh, in April, then then that column gonna be zero for April. Um, so that we don't have to manually track each of our uh, report to the, the school, but that is one like one student. Okay, I've I have, I've got to run, but uh, Spencer's going to stay and uh, provide everything you possibly could uh, ever wish for. You'll Thank have you, Brandon. You'll have a good day. And. Yeah, I think that's an amazing idea for summer. So kudos and chew for that. <laughs> I think um, just going back to the the concept of the P223 report, I think it's just because like we are all required by law to submit that information. Um, the high schools, of course, would love it to actually be in the P223 form. Uh, all of my high schools that I work with have gotten released to like, we just send the Excel spreadsheet like that's just what we do but then i'll have like one-off schools uh, normally smaller high schools who are like but this isn't the form and this isn't and it's like no it's it's the equivalent and you know it's a whole thing it would just be nice for the consistency i think for the high school district registrars uh, because we like somebody else mentioned we are sharing a lot more students between colleges. And so I can only imagine how frustrating it must be like when South Puget Sound sends one version of report and Centralia sends another and Grace Harbor is sending something else. And it's, it's just not consistent, which because we have to report it, it, it seems like there should be a way to kind of pull that uh, together and, and be able to have consistently. And just the man hours, like I my person who calculates all of this and does all the reports, it's a minimum of three to four hours for her to pull the 34 high schools that we're working with, get everything compiled, get things rearranged, get things calculated. Like it, there's just so much work beyond just pulling the query that still has to be done and then packaging it with, you know, signatures and dates and, and all that stuff. So a lot of man hours every month spent on just billing. <laughs> What would be nice is if the if the high school's count date and information didn't have to be to the state before our count information had to be to the high schools and districts. You know, theirs are due to the to the state on the first day of the month and we have until the eighth day. It's like, why, why can't it all be due on the same day so that we can have that grace period to get our information to the high schools instead of them relying on our preliminary reports that we send to them. We can definitely share that. I have no idea if that's something, you know, that uh, my guess is it's, it's, it's clearly it's much bigger than us and the K-12 system, but it's definitely something to bring up. Um, I, so this is where I feel a little like naive or out of touch because I was not in this role when we started creating this report and why it didn't look a little bit more like the P223. So I don't know if there's any historical reasons for it, but and, and I don't want to overpromise anything, but I, I, I want, we definitely want to make this work easy, you know, make this an easier process for you. So if we can make it work, we'd like to do it. And the student financials team has been amazing. Um, this whole time of, of honoring and helping us with requests. So um, I don't want to make, I want to make sure we don't spend too much more time on this so we can get to everything else, but 
I'm thinking um, we we may pull together a few of you and it may be worth to bringing Becky McLean in and, and letting her know, like we'd like to get to a place where we have a common, this is what it's gonna look like for everybody. And can you agree and make sure that, you know, districts are on board and they understand and that they're not starting to ask for specific things and that we just have one common way. Is that kind of where we're trying to get at? I wanna make sure I'm, I'm understanding. That seems to be what I'm getting. Go ahead, Ann. I just saw you uh, unmute. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly it. And like in the comments, I, I know that there are some amazing IT individual offices that have done some great reporting and things. So there, there are some things out there that are really amazing. It's just individually at each school, we don't necessarily have the infrastructure to support, right, the tech requirements that that takes. And so having it be something that's actually from the state level where that support is built in uh, just makes a big difference. Like I know over time, like we've had we had somebody in our office who just happened to really know Excel inside and out and built all these formulas and it was really great. Well, then they left and now we're like, oh, uh, if something breaks, we try to fix it. You know, so I think it's just that because not all of us have the ability to do that on our own. And because again, it's a statewide requirement, we can all still send our individualized like enrollment reports and things like that. But for the actual billing, like it needs to be these specific things it, it just, yeah, feels like it's time to get there if we can. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. And oh, go ahead, Jamie. I, just oh, I was just going to oh. follow up. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think we we're trying to say the same thing. Yeah. So uh, that's why we wanted to start having this conversation during this session. And thank you, everyone, so much for all of the feedback you all have provided. This is so helpful. Um, at least a starting point to start to try to figure out, yeah, why why work harder when you can work smarter at some of these things? And um, yeah, I love the idea of basically creating some type of something that matches that P223 because you're right, it's a ton of ton of work on everyone. Um, so I'm excited about what we've gotten from you all today. And um, I, I like the idea of, so just my initial thought here is, you know, we're going to see if Becky can, Becky McLean can, uh, from OSPI can attend our next March meeting um, with Tim. And so um, I, I hope to maybe have a meeting with her before that, me and Jamie, or, you know, to try, again, we don't want to make any promises, but um, at least we can maybe start to have those conversations about what we can do to make this look a little bit um, easier for folks. And yeah, Maria, Christina too. <laughs> um, sounds good. Um, so yeah, I, student financial team, do you all have any questions for folks or anything um, that you all wanted to, to add? Not from me. I, I just want to say, yeah, it's, if, if all the data lives in PeopleSoft and we're spitting out 40 fields, but there is a set report that needs to be sent out to like, is it the high schools, right? This P2332, that one. Yeah. Yep, that one. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that, that's totally doable. Yeah. So like, as long as we, you know, get all the concrete, right? Anytime IT, right? We need all the concrete logic rules, how it needs to be formatted. That's totally something that we can do. Like that, I think our last meeting where I was, me and Charles were pinging each other, like, why don't we, what, do we have something like that yet? And so we, we were thinking the same thing. So yeah, as long as we get all, like, it sounds like meet with the right people, get the, get the formatting down and what, what kind of data we need. That's, that's totally something doable and seems worth doing for sure. Wonderful. Thank you, Spencer. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. All right. Well, um, I think what we'll do is the next step is maybe um, kind of talk together and, and figure out if we want to put together like a, a work group um, to include y'all, maybe put it out on, on listserv um, and see who would like to take part in this work with us. Uh, and really get going on this because I, I think it's long overdue at this point um, to, to get something that works a little bit easier for our whole system. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Student Financials team. Um, we're really like, excited to see what we can do here um, and make everything a little bit easier on folks. All right. Um, we are going to go ahead and move on to our next slide here. Okay. 
So this is more of a ask. Uh, so the 2024 NASEP National Conference uh, concurrent enrollment programs, uh, national and concurrent enrollment programs uh, is gonna be held October 27th through 29th in Orlando, Florida. And um, we are doing some pretty amazing things statewide when it comes to concurrent enrollment and especially running start. Um, we're very, it's a very unique program um, when you look across the U.S. And Jamie and I uh, had attended NASAP uh, in October in St. Louis. And, you know, we were going to some of the sessions and we we're, we we're like, why not feature, you know, what we're, all the great work you all are doing in Washington state. And so we would love to put together a proposal um, on some of the innovative practices and programs that you all have. Um, so if you are interested um, in uh, working together on, on a proposal, uh, we would love to hear from you. And, and the proposals close um, um, are due actually March 29th. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. So if you're interested, if you could let me know by March 5th, uh, we could get working on something, a proposal together to present. And really uh, this particular conference is focused, as you can see here on spotlighting the student experience. So we were thinking, and, and the, the sessions tend to focus on uh, accreditation and program quality, uh, advising, career pathways, equity work, policy and advocacy, program operation and innovation, uh, research data and program evaluation, and then the newest one for this year and is also the uh, focus of the conference is that spotlighting the student experience. So if you're doing, you know, wonderful work with, you know, underserved populations, underrepresented students, uh, innovative work in, with your low income uh, waivers, uh, accessibility, we would love, and you would be interested in this, um, please reach out to me because um, we would love to, to put something together with you all in partnership. And I will say it's not a big task to get the proposal. Like they're not asking for a ton of stuff up, up front. So don't don't let like, oh my gosh, I gotta submit all this stuff to Stephanie and Jamie stop you from doing this. Like we will take care of that piece. We just need to highlight. And I think our thoughts are really highlighting like three colleges or like we wanna wanna highlight a a few and have some foundational stuff about the program and then best practices. Um and like Stephanie said, like I mean I just I think it just makes sense we should be highlighting this stuff at the national level. So please email Stephanie and we'll get this going. Plus it's a Disney World. I'm a I'm a Disney geek. So but <laughs> I plan to do some Disney World a couple days afterwards and it's on the grounds of Disney. So if you don't like Disney, maybe not, but it, it should be a good time. They actually even show it right in their visual there. So I think that's saying a lot. But yeah, thank you, Jamie. Um so we'd love to hear from you all and please please reach out to me. Don't hesitate. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and move on. So we didn't quite get the, to this, our last series um, in, in January, um, but definitely wanted to mention this. So we wanted to kind of send out an open call to you all. Um, you know, we're continually, continually improving our processes and communication. Um, we are just curious if any of you all would like to share uh, best practice documents you've created, um, we would be completely open and so happy uh, to receive anything that you would like to share with us. We would like to put together a running start statewide handbook uh, that would be kind of best practices, some guidance. Um, and so if you would be willing to share anything that you have that you think hmm, this is pretty innovative, this is this is a great practice, it seems to work well for us um, around maybe billing reports, training new staff, something that's made your department better, uh, please, we would be more than, than happy and very appreciative and grateful to receive any of that information you'd like to share uh, because we're really trying to gather information. As you kind of saw with the P223 and the billing report, we're really trying to um, you know, put together support statewide to, to help um, guide and have resources available to all. So um, same thing, go ahead and uh, email me if you, you would like to share anything. Um, we would be really grateful for that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. I already went to the billing report. Okay, so we are actually now at uh, our breakout sessions. And so um, I've got three basically